This is an AJ Duggar exclusive. All right. I'm recording now. This is AJ Duggar talking to Mr. Teron Brooks. And if you haven't heard of him, he's a singer and an actor, and he played A.D. Kendricks in The Temptations. Um, first of all, how you doing, Teron? I'm doing incredible. AJ, you're doing really great. Cool, man. I want to say, man, I'm a huge fan, and the movie The Temptations got me into the group big. And I remember you did a great job as Eddie, because you were tearing it up on that song, Oh, Mother of Mine. <laughs> <laughs> you I appreciate that, man. Yeah, a long time ago, when I could, when I could get up there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How long have you been singing? Uh, I've been singing, man, since a uh, little kid, six years old. Singing in church, pretty much all my life, all that I can remember, um, I've been singing. You know, so it wasn't so much later, probably though, you know, like seventeen or eighteen, where I thought I could maybe make a career out of it. You know. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I would just do it. You know, church functions, <laughs> school. <laughs> uh, but you never, you never really think that you can really make a career out of it. You know, some people do. Some people's parents push them really hard, and mine, mine definitely didn't. They were very um, understanding, and uh, they didn't treat me like I was a walking microphone, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, and how did you get into acting, and what TV shows and movies have you done? Um, well, I went to the high, uh, Orange County High School of the Arts, and that's where I studied acting because I was just concerned about, you know, maybe being a singer or, a, honestly, I wanted to be a lawyer or a newscaster. <laughs> and uh, I remember just this mentor of mine just said, you know what, you got to do more than sing. You can't just stand there and sing, you know. And if you take these acting classes and these dancing classes and, you know, just performing classes, you'll be a better uh, performer and you'll be able to communicate your message better as a singer. And so, I, you know, that really intrigued me. And I said, you know what, I'm going to take this up. It wasn't like I was really interested in acting or anything like that. It's just um, something that I did in school, and it really helped with my uh, performance ability, you know. So after that, I got an agent, and uh, uh, I started auditioning and did a couple of TV shows and uh, went to Broadway with The Lion King, and, and uh, I was... Uh, the first national tour of Hairspray. So I've done a lot of different things, not just singing. I've done some Broadway shows, some TV shows, some films. I've done another film called All About You that a lot of people have seen. Um, you know, and I got about four records on iTunes, and I'm working on my new record. So I'm really blessed to do a lot of different different things. Awesome. And I remember you you had a you made an appearance on Hang with Mr. Cooper, and I was like, man, what's Eddie Kendrick's doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was one of the kids in uh, Coop's class. <laughs> I think my name was Derek, but yeah, <laughs> I did an episode of that. I did an episode of Alec McBeal. Um, a couple of pilots I've done, a couple of commercials. But I'm just really blessed, man, that I've been able to do just a little bit of everything. Um, and I really like that. You know, I love to do more films, but um, you know, my focus is my music as a songwriter. Um, that's my number one passion. Okay. Okay, man. Uh, let me ask you a few questions about the movie, um, the Temptations movie. Um, have yeah. you have you always had that pure falsetto like Eddie Kendricks, or was that something that that took a lot of work? Funny thing, AJ. Yeah, I've always had that. I guess that was a really uh, asset to me getting the part. I, I suppose. But I've always been, you know, singing high, using my falsetto. I love Sam Cooke, you know, I love the yodel, you know, people, those those old soul singers that used to yodel and go up to the falsetto. Um, I have a pretty wide range, and even in my own songs, I kind of use my falsetto a lot. So Brian McKnight was a big influence on me, and he uses his falsetto a lot. When I auditioned for The Temptations, I auditioned for Paul, so it was very interesting. I didn't even show up for Eddie Kendricks, and then the uh, producer just saw something in me and asked me to sing and read for Eddie. So, yeah, it kind of worked out. Everything was really natural and organic in that process. I didn't feel like I was stressed or strained or anything um, to play Eddie. I guess I just had some natural um, similarities, you know, with, with him and I. So it worked out. Awesome. And uh, so uh, some people know this and some people don't, but 
you did some of your of your own singing in that movie. Can you tell us which songs you sung and which songs were really Eddie off the top of your head? Yeah, the funny thing is, is I sang a majority of of the movie, which I didn't get credit for. So I think people are kind of confused. They know it's not Eddie, but then it sounds like Eddie, I guess, which is a huge co- <laughs> compliment. Um, I sang everything except Paradise in the beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. and the first time that we sing the the way you do the things you do is Eddie's voice. So everything else was me in the in the film. So um, you know about ninety. 85% of me, and then the rest was really Eddie. Okay. Hoo, 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 hoo. I've been practicing. I'm, <laughs> I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get it like you. Okay. Yeah, you can get it. You can get it. Yeah, <laughs> you can put your pants up, you know, wear some tight underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, and let, let me ask you this, man. A lot of people wanted me to ask you this because it's a rumor that's been going around. Okay, when the Temptations left Motown in the 70s, uh, they replaced Dennis Edwards with a singer named Louis Price. And there's been rumors. Okay. Now there's been rumors for years that Lewis Price sung the David Ruffin, Dennis Edwards parts in the movie. Is that true? It is true. Okay. Okay. It is true. It is true. Yeah. Everybody, did they think Leon sang? Or? <laughs> well, it was just you know on, on a lot of the fan sites, you know, some people say it was Lewis and some people say it wasn't because you know when Lennox, well, not Lennox, when Lewis Price was a Temptation, he sung kind of smooth. He didn't sing with that raspy David Ruffin or Dennis Edwards type of voice. So yeah, yeah, but it's true. Lewis Price. Now I'm not gonna. I gotta go back and see what exactly he sang because um, I don't want to misquote that. But mm-hmm. I know for a fact that Lewis was on that soundtrack and that he sang. Either Dennis or David or both. So let me clarify that before everybody get mad at me. But <laughs> he, 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 did, he did sing either or both or one of them. Okay. Um, and he tore it up too, okay. actually. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. So he definitely sang something. That, you know, okay. Yes, exactly. Let's say that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, say that. Yeah, that, that'll work for both of us. He's saying something. He's there. Okay. <laughs> um. All right, now, I know Eddie was a complicated character to play, and I, I remember you saying in one interview that you wanted to uphold Eddie's truth. Now, in your opinion, what kind of guy was Eddie, and what was he about? Uh, I, I, obviously, in the movie, Eddie was about loyalty. He was very loyal to Paul, because Paul was his best friend, but he was also loyal to the group and to the, um, I think, the the precepts that kind of why he joined the group. And I think it started to change a little bit for Eddie when when Paul got sick and when they wanted to replace Paul. And then when, you know, even when David was doing all of his mess, I think Eddie, uh, Eddie was still saying, but he's still the Temptations. He's still part of the group. We can't give up on him. Mm-hmm. So I think um, the integrity of, of Eddie, um, just to, 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 to kind of care for the different guys in the group and not just throw them to the side of the road, I guess, is kind of one of the wonderful things about Eddie Kendrick's um, but also maybe to a fault a little bit, maybe to the naive side or to the, you know, Eddie just didn't want, if Paul was going to be in the group, he was going to feel lonely. He was going to feel abandoned, you know what I mean? So he was also just really hoping that, you know, what was familiar to him was still going to be the same group and the same thing. Eddie would have never joined the Temptations without Paul, never. Mm-hmm. So it was really important for him to stick up and make sure that, okay, we're not going to change too much, right? You know, um, and Eddie loved the group. He loved to sing. He loved, you know, so I think he was worried about the success of the group also with who they were going to replace. And um, But I just tried to, to play Eddie as honest as I can. He seemed to be a, um, uh, I don't want to say he was the soul of the group, but he was the heartbeat of trying to keep the truth, you know. So. Okay. And I guess I, guess I can find that in my own life too with my own, Relationships and you know with, 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 with what I believe, you know, always trying to search for the truth and and the uh, integrity of a situation. So that that was easy to play. Okay, and you mentioned David Ruffin a second ago. Now, um, <laughs> when I showed the Temptations movie to my wife for the first time, um, it was at that part. It was the part when you know, David had been kicked out the group for a while, and then Eddie Kendricks knocks on his door. And uh, and my wife was like, "Oh man, not him!" Like so. In your in your in your opinion, why did Eddie pick up an alliance with David Ruffin? Oh wow. Uh, well, they they were the voices. They were the lead singers of the group. So you have to know that as well. They mm-hmm. they Eddie and David split the lead, so they had probably the most visibility. Um. And I, uh, like I said 
before, I don't think Eddie ever wanted Paul, uh, David to leave the group. So I think there was always a dissension, even when the decision was made to kick him out. Eddie wasn't for that. Mm-hmm. Eddie didn't agree, you know? Right. So I think that just kind of opened the door, so to speak, for him to kind of check out what David was doing. And as you know, David was kicked out of the group, and Eddie left the group to do solo work. So I think David was almost like a silent mentor to Eddie in, in kind of helping him make his decisions. Can I leave the Temptations and be successful? Well, David did. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was kind of the, the oh. kindred spirit of what happened with David and Eddie. They were the voices. David was kicked out, and he did pretty well by himself. And Eddie was trying to think, can I do that? You know? And so there was an influence, you know. Like I said, Eddie had a little bit of a na- 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 naivete about him. And he was easily influenced, you know? Mm-hmm. If Paul said to do this, he would have done it. Right. You know what I mean? So... Um, now, I don't mean that he didn't have a strength of character or that he was a pushover. I just mean, you know, he trusted, let's say that. He trusted hard. So he believed if you said something, he believed it. If Otis said something, he believed it, you know? So. Okay. Yeah, I remember that part backstage, you know, when uh, when Blue said, Ain't no one man bigger than this group. Now, you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression, isn't it? <laughs> it's a great impression. You me a little bit. Yeah. Now, now we, now we all, we, I know everyone's listening and they want to know, The Temptations movie was an adaptation of a book that was written by Otis, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so we can't just take everything that happened in the movie and go around and act like every, it was a movie and they took some poet, poetic license here and there. So I want to make sure that that's clear, uh, you know? With every movie, with any true story, if you want to bring it to TV or film, it, it, sometimes you take creative license and you do things that not exactly, exactly happen. And um, to make it theatrical or to make it, you know, and uh, I'm sure that that's what happened in the Temptation movie as well. So we got to understand that and ain't nobody really lying or not telling the truth. But, you know, we made a movie for TV, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think some people get confused with that as well. So did, did, did Otis actually say those words? You know, every single thing that we said was, <laughs> you know, I, I can't say I wasn't there, you know. Right. But um, uh, I think it was true to form in, in, in a lot of ways and, and eye-opening in a lot of ways that people didn't know about the temptations. And that's why people, I think it resonates with people um, more so, the music was great, but more so getting to know the guys and care for the guys, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I lost you or something. No, um, no, I'm here. Okay. Um, now, and speaking of which, it's funny you just said that because I was going to ask you about this. Uh, the miniseries didn't go into all of the details that Otis went into in this book because, you know, I've seen interviews with Eddie Kendricks and, you know, according to Otis's book and Eddie himself, you know, Eddie wanted to record a solo album while he was with the group. But they wouldn't let him, and you know he wasn't happy with the psychedelic recording. He was having issues with Motown. Do, why do you think the miniseries neglected to mention these things? Because it looks like Eddie left strictly because of Paul, but in real life there were these other things. So do you think that the movie kind of neglected to mention that stuff because of time time restraints? You think? Yes, AJ. Man, we had so much more. I mean, I shot so many other scenes that have never been shown. You know, you can't have. 23 hours on TV, it's a two-night special, you know what I mean, and you have to get to the to the heart of what you're doing, plus you have five guys to split uh, the screen time with, you know what I'm saying, so you got to get the most important things about Eddie, the most important things about David, or, or really the most important things about the story, you know, so I understand that, you can't put everything in there, um, also you didn't want it to be too heavy, everybody, you know what I mean, everybody but Otis is not around, didn't survive, you know, and I think NBC uh, thought maybe it was going to be too heavy for people. Got to have a mixture, you know, like I just said, you're making a movie, you're making a theatrical experience. Okay, and uh, I know we just lost Whitney Houston not too long ago. What are your, where were you when you heard the tragic news? Uh, I think I was, again, I think I was in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, it's very tragic. You know, it's hard to speak about, I think, really. I, I'm a huge Whitney Houston fan, and I was a huge person, uh, believer that I was trying to uh, find the strength to get better, you know? So, um, I can't say I was surprised, though. I would be lying to say that I was shocked, 
you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, wow, it's a big, big loss. And you know what? Life is short. We're we're losing a lot of people, and so I hope people not only just spectate on what happened. I hope people are taking note, I guess, of what's happening and what can happen to you, um, and how fragile life can be. So. You know, I pray for her daughter and her family, and I um, uh, just pray that she's at peace. You know what I mean? We don't know the life of a celebrity and, and what, what that takes, uh, the toll it takes on your soul, you know? So, same thing with Michael Jackson. You know, you don't know he's at the top of his of the world, but you don't know how that feels, to, um, that pressure, you know? So, I just, for both of them, I have just that they're at peace and, um, you know, and their music lives on. We have all that to, to, to really listen to and reflect and uh, kind of uplift us, you know. But, yeah, it's a tragic, tragic loss. But Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you too much long. I just have a few more questions. Now, uh, how many albums have you put out so far? Um, I officially probably have four to five records. I have a Christmas record as well. <clears throat> and... Uh, I'm working on my, my newest one right now. So, um, but I mean, yeah, tell everybody if they want to go to iTunes, go to iTunes and just buy buy whatever's there. <laughs> I can hear my my own style because a lot of people don't know that I that I I'm not Eddie Kendricks and I don't just sound like that. I have my own style, you know. So, and th- and that was going to be my next question. I was going to say, describe the sound of Teron Brooks to me. Um, my style is pop soul. That's what I call it. It's, it's, you know, pop music with a soulful uh, delivery, if you will, Mm -hmm. Um, with inspirational lyrics. Everything I write is going to encourage and inspire you. I don't write any nonsense or anything, you know, dirty or nasty or anything like that. So, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't want to say a spiritual person, but I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. (laughs) Let me say that. Mm-hmm. And so everything that's influenced through me comes from a higher place where I really want to, you know, inspire people, you know, and I think that's what music should do. I think music should heal people, make people happy, you know, not weigh people down. And uh, so anything that I do is, is going to be that. But the style of the genre, is, you know, is like pop soul, I, w- I, I would call it like... Um, and I would be okay if anybody wanted to call it whatever they wanted to call it. You know what I mean? Now music is so diverse and, and different, and people want to peg you into one kind of category, you know? So I, I would love for someone to hear it and say, oh, I think it's this, or I think it's that, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't want to be confined to what it is, but to describe it would be, you know, like Indie Irie, John Legend-ish kind of style. Um, and hopefully it's my own. Hopefully it's unique, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I know you're working on, on a new album right now, and I want to ask you, how is it shaping up, and when can your fans expect it? Oh, man, it's incredible, man. It's shaping up incredibly. I did this Kickstarter campaign. It's kickstarter.com. I don't know if people know about it, where you can raise money. A lot of my fans have given to the project. Um, it's like you can pledge you know, a certain amount of money, and then they get a certain reward for pledging. And I almost raised uh, 95 hundred dollars in that so the record should be done at the end of the month and um i haven't decided when it's going to be released for everyone i know i'm going to be selling it at concerts and stuff like that but that's to be determined when everybody can get it as far as itunes and stuff like that but on my website or you know people can contact me through facebook and twitter i can definitely send it to you hey um but I'm I'm holding off for a little while to, to, to have a release date, but maybe sometime in the fall. Okay. And do you have a website? Um, it's under construction, but it is TorontoBrooks.com. Um, okay. but it is uh, under construction. And if you Facebook me like you did, <laughs> mm-hmm. I will respond. I will accept you as a friend. It's really me. Um, and I'm on Twitter. So those those two things right now, you definitely can. Uh, get a hold of me and I'm, I'm very active on Facebook um, actually but TorontoBrooks.com eventually will have more information when the album comes out and stuff like that okay and is there anything else that you want to tell your fans oh man I just appreciate it you, 
guys. I appreciate all. I, I can't believe it. Every single day, um, I'm reminded about the film when I forget about it. <laughs> and from all over, just really all over, the love and the support has really kept me going. There's been times where I didn't want to continue or, you know, just want to give up. The, the, the business is very, very difficult. And my fans and, and friends, I call them, have always just been there just to tell me how much I meant to them and um, that what I do is important. So I really, really value every single, you know, person that cares about me and what I do and that they love the film. I'm really, really blessed that, that everybody loved it and that um, um, they're proud of it and I am too. So nothing but love for everybody. Awesome. This is an A.J. Duggar exclusive.